God's put on my heart a message about living below your privileges. And we're going to go to 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 4 through 10. 1 Peter, second chapter, verses 4 through 10. And here, Peter is reminding the believers that they have a glorious calling and that they are absolutely special in God's sight. That, and before that, he speaks about no longer being an infant and needing the pure milk of the word, as Brother Ron preached on recently. That Christ is our pure foundation. And he speaks of the amazing privileges that believers in Christ have. Like going to the Lord, sister, and praying, and seeking his face, and saying, Lord, where are you? That's a privilege tonight, amen? Thank you, Lord. He speaks of our identity in Christ, who we are, and the privileges that we have. Thank you, Lord. And 4 says, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Chosen of God and precious. That's Jesus Christ. Rejected of men, but chosen of God and precious. Oh, it's so good. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. He tells the, telling the believers that through Jesus Christ, ye also a lively stone. And you're very special in his sight. We're precious to Jesus. What's our identity? We're precious in his sight. Didn't the kids sing that? Red and yellow, black and white. We are precious. We are precious in His sight. We're a treasure. We're His treasure. Thank you, Lord. And we have been made holy priests before God. And along with being precious to God, we've been given many wonderful, amazing privileges in our life. Think about all the privileges that God has bestowed on your life and still does. Thank you, Lord. And God, it says here in 5, and God is building us into a spiritual house. Holy priest. Brothers and sisters, this is the question tonight. Do we understand all the privileges that God has for us? Do we understand it? All of the honors that we have available to us as believers? Or are we living below our privileges? Think about it. We're absolutely special and privileged in God's eyes. I don't think I can even fathom what God thinks of me. Brother Steve... The one who doesn't always serve him the way they sh he should. The one that doesn't always do things the way he should. Doesn't always follow the word the way he should. He loves me so much. Praise God. I can't fathom it. How God sees us. And six. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone. Jesus, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Oh, yes. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be, oh, diso be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the stone that the builders rejected, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. 
even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But here it is, and I love this, 9 and 10 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Can you fathom what's being said here? I preached on these verses, these two verses, a while back. We are considered by God to be peculiar, not odd, not strange, not unusual, but peculiar in this message here means that we're a treasured possession of God, that we belong to God. Isn't that good? Right there, that's a privilege. Tonight, we're privileged for being in his house. How many places don't have Wednesday night services anymore? Many have shut them down, or they're doing something different. They don't have the word of God necessarily, or maybe they're doing a Bible study or something along those lines. I like the services. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Peculiar. A treasured possession. Special. Belonging to God. Valuable. We're valuable. We're valuable. God looked at their situation and said, Oh no, you're valuable. He looks at our situation and says, Oh no, you're valuable to me. And I'll take you through whatever you're going through. Praise God. I love that. That you should show forth the praises of him who called you. What? Here comes another privilege. Hang on to it. He's called us, each one of us, out of where? Darkness. Were we in darkness? Oh, we grew up in the church. We were never in darkness. Oh, yes, we were. Privilege, what a great privilege. He called me out of darkness into where? The marvel, his marvelous light. Oh, I can't thank the Lord enough. Praise God. I should be shouting to the rooftops. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for taking me out of the darkness and into his marvelous light, which in the time past were not a people, but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy. But now, what do we obtain? We obtain mercy. Where? Through Jesus Christ. How? Through Jesus Christ. I love that. Thank you, Lord. As I read this verse, as I was placing this message together, I shouted out many thanks because I started thinking about the Lord and all the things that He's done for me. And I was thinking, thank you, Lord. I can do nothing else but praise God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. This verse really affected me, taking me out of darkness into the marvelous. What a, what a privilege. Thank you, Lord. Nothing better. I belong to Him. I am His. I'm His child. And He knows everything that's going on in my life. And he oversees my life if I allow him to, if I believe, if I trust in him. He's going to do great and mighty things. The song we sing says, oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the king. When you sing that song, believe it with all your heart. Because we're his children. He's our father. Praise God. And he's telling us tonight, he's telling us very clearly tonight, don't live below your privileges. Don't live below the privileges that I have given you. Unfortunately, sometimes this brother does. These spiritual privileges, sometimes we take them for granted. 
Sometimes we don't exercise in the privileges that He gives us. Sometimes we don't take advantage of His privileges. We don't live in His privileges like He desires us to. Oh Lord. A privilege is a right or a benefit enjoyed or taken advantage of by a person that's beyond what most people have. That's a privilege. And it's not a right we are due. It's not a right that we're owed. It's not a right that we've earned or gained in some way. It's a great gift. These privileges are great gifts. Thank you, Lord, for the great gifts that you've given me. That you've given us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Everything we are, everything that we have, is from Jesus. You agree with that? And it's because, it's because of his great love for each one of us. Thank you, Lord. I can't nearly cover all of the privileges that God offers us tonight. We'd have to do a six-week lesson to even try to cover all of the great privileges that He offers us. But I'm going to ask you to begin to think in your mind about all the privileges that God has placed in your life. All that he's done for you. Oh, you'd have to be writing forever to write them all down. When I think about the Lord, how great he is in my life. Thank you, Lord. Where would I be? Don't live below your spiritual privileges from God. He chose each one of us before the foundation of the world. He's building us up, as it says in these verses, as a spiritual house. What does that mean? He wants us to be a spiritual house. It's a place where He wants to dwell. Amen? It's a place where He wants the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of us. A spiritual house. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. He's made us, in, made us into priests. A holy priesthood, giving us privilege. He's given us direct access to Him through Jesus Christ. We have direct access. What a privilege. We're His children. We're acceptable to God through Christ. We're His treasured possession. Oh my, I love that. I'm, thank you, Lord, I'm valuable to my God. We're precious in His sight. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, you've done so much. He allows us the privilege of His security. When we go out, He's watching over us. He's protecting us. He's keeping us. Amen? How many times have we said... I could have had a bad accident. But God stepped in. He has great privileges for us. He protects us. Thank you, Lord. His healing. To come, we can come to the altar and be prayed for by the elders and anointed with oil, as the Word of God says. Isn't that a privilege? I don't think all churches have that. I don't know. Pretty sure not. And we can believe that we're going to be healed. Thank you, Lord. Our intimacy with Him is a great privilege. Our intimacy with Him, our prayer, our going to Him at any time and talking to Him and communicating with Him. What a great privilege that I can talk to the Creator of this earth. The Creator of each one of us. 
I can talk to him and he listens to me. What a privilege. Well, you're getting real excited, brother. Well, I might get more excited. Praise God. We have the privilege of an inheritance. An inheritance of eternal life. To live forever with him in paradise. Thank you, Lord, for that privilege. His discipline. Well, I don't know, Brother Steve, is that really a privilege? Oh, yes, because Brother Steve gets off the path sometimes. And Brother Steve needs correction sometimes. And he brings me back. Why? Because he loves me so much. His discipline is a privilege for me. Thank you, Lord. His peace and joy. His amazing grace and mercy. Don't live below these privileges that God has made available to you. Amen? Praise God. Go with me to Ephesians, the first chapter, 3rd through 11th verse. I was just going to read verse 3, but I couldn't stop because Peter had the pen before and he was writing. That was Peter, what we read before. Here Paul takes the pen and says, let me at this, Peter. And he starts to write in great detail about our privileges. Let me get there. Praise God. And three, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, listen, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen? According as he hath chosen us, he's chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us unto the adoption, he's adopted us, adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. A privilege to the praise of, of the glory of his grace, his amazing grace. That's a privilege. Thank you, Lord. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption. We have redemption. Listen, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins. What a privilege. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. His amazing grace. Praise God. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. He's revealed to us the mystery of his will. What he desires from us. Isn't that a privilege? He tells us and he instructs us how to go forward, what to do, to be close to him. Thank you, Lord. According to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also we have obtained, what? We have obtained an inheritance, another privilege. That's a privilege to be a part of his inheritance. Being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Paul details all of the privileges that God has and is making available to us tonight. But we must take advantage of these privileges that he makes available. We need to exercise in them. We need not to forget them. We need not to take them for granted. 
You know, when you're in the Lord for a long time, you can, if you're not careful, you can begin to take the Lord for granted in his wonderful privileges. Every day we should get up and say, thank you, Lord, for all the benefits. Thank you, Lord, for all of the great privileges that you offer me. Your grace and mercy are enough, but you give me such more, so much more. Thank you, Lord. Don't allow the privileges to remain inactive or dormant. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to mention one last privilege that we have that no one seems to think is really a privilege, and that's the privilege of suffering for Jesus Christ. Well, Brother Steve, I don't know about that. Is that, is that really a privilege? I, I don't really like the suffering part of that. What does he say in his word? We're to suffer for him. It's a privilege. It's an honor. Because why? He suffered for us. He died on the cross for us. He went through that cruel humiliation of death. He suffered for me. Can I suffer a little bit for him? He talks about reasonable service that I can give him. Yes. Absolutely. Philippians 1, 29 says, For you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. And I looked up the NLT translation and it said, For you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but the privilege of suffering for him. I can suffer for Christ? Yes. In this life we have to sometimes. We can be persecuted for believing in Jesus Christ. We can be left out of things. We can be pushed aside because we believe in Christ. Not following the way of the world the fleshly, the worldly race we talked about last week. Not going along with the crowd. Going through maybe some persecution. Maybe me being made fun of because of what, we're, what we believe in. Jesus says, suffer for me. Amen. We have to go through trials sometimes and temptations. And maybe we have to step out of our comfort zone because God has placed us in a place that we're thinking, I don't belong there. I don't feel comfortable there. He's asking us to do what? Suffer for him. I've asked you to do this and I'll take you through it. Praise God. Maybe we're targeted for our beliefs. In some countries, not yet in this United States, but some countries people are being physically persecuted and sometimes killed for their belief in Christ. James 1 and 2 says this, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Paul reminds us here that a victorious life in Christ is not always easy. That we may have to suffer. But it is a privilege. Romans 8.17 says, And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God. And, it, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. Someday, Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, basically says, we now have a high priest that has passed to heaven, Jesus. A, pro a high priest that has been tempted, tempted in every way possible, yet he is without sin. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this message. Lord, I need to take advantage of the privileges that you put in my life. Take advantage. Let us come boldly unto the throne for the privileges that he offers us through the, to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace. What a privilege. Let us not neglect or reject or forget or take for granted the privileges that we have in Christ. We must be in great praise and thanks in honor for the privileges that he offers. And I'll leave you with this. It's been said throughout the message. Don't live below the privileges that God makes available to you any longer. And when you wake up in the morning, think about the Lord. In that song, when I think about the Lord, and thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. But most of all, thank you, Lord, for how much that you love us. Amen? May the name of the Lord be praised.